I'll be speaking to us this morning on what I've titled The Power of Spiritual Depth The Power of Spiritual Depth And we all know that depth or height is naturally a function of depth as far as construction and divorce is concerned. Height is naturally a function of depth. If you see the foundation of um, a bungalow is shallower than the foundation of one story building. And the foundation of one story building is definitely shallower than the foundation of a five story building. I remember the first multi level building I was involved in was a seven floor building at the old church. And they kept digging and digging and saying, Ah, what's the matter? Even though that's my field, but it dawned on me that in every construction endeavor, Height is a function of depth. Because for purpose of stability, the root must be deep enough to bear the height. Otherwise, there will be a deflection. So also it is in our spiritual life. It is your spiritual depth that determines the height of your command. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Who are you? You don't have their order of command because you don't have their order of depth. So you will need their depth to operate at their level of command. The power of spiritual depth. And I'd like you to listen extensively this morning because um, uh, people have erroneously believed that the Bible is all about our spiritual welfare. Far from being the truth. God's word is sent to influence every aspect of human life. How do I know that? Creation itself has a spiritual root, not a scientific root. Creation has what? A spiritual root. So it only answers to spiritual commands. How was creation? How did creation come to be? The Bible said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And then suddenly, the word was void. And God had to recreate that word. If you check between verse 1 and verse 3, there's a gap. In the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Hmm? And then he said, and the earth was without form and void. And then God said, so there was a re-engineering of the original creation. Hello. And the engineering process helps us understand the original approach that brought creation into being. And God said. So creation has it does not have its root in scientific research or findings or scientific command. It has its root in spirit in the spiritual. And God said, let there be. And there came light. Now, in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1, he said, By faith we understand that the words were created by the word of God. And the things that we now see did not come out of the things which do appear. Amen. So, everything that eventually came to be, came out of things that do not appear. So it has a spiritual root. Come and say spiritual root. And so it only answers to spiritual commands. All aspects of human life answers absolutely to spiritual commands. So your level of spiritual depth is what determines your level of command. 
And I'm going to prove that to you from scriptures this morning. And to help you see how that personal transformation, national reformation, everything about your career and your place in life is defined by your spiritual depth. Hello. Is defined by what? Is defined by your spiritual depth. Absolutely defined by your spiritual depth. Even money that looks like a modern day issue. Money has a spiritual root. Mm. As far back as Genesis chapter 13, Abraham was very rich in silver and gold. And to define that for us, in chapter 47 of Genesis, verse 15, he said, and when money failed in the land. So as far as Genesis, there was money. So money is not a scientific discovery that we went through trade by butter nonsense. Before trade by butter started, money was already on the same. And God came out and said, the silver is mine and the gold is mine, said God. So God is the originator of money. That is as scientific as money appears to be, it has a spiritual root. Now God is still the custodian of national reformations. Because all that happened in Egypt happened by the revelation of God to Joseph. And as much as God has shown you all this, and by the revelation that God gave to Joseph, he preserved the whole generation of Egypt. God showed him. So personal transformations, national reformations, all have their root in the spiritual. Because creation itself has its root in the spiritual. So the creation can only have its root in the spiritual. Now there are preachers and there are reformers. Hello. Now the biggest businessman, the greatest biggest businessman in his time, by name Job, he said, I had arrived here by trading divine secrets. By trading what? Others were trading intellectual secrets. Job was trading divine secrets. And he outshined them all. Job chapter 1 and verse 1 to 3. There was a man of whose, I mean, whose name was Job. And this man was a man that feared God and eschewed evil. A perfect man. Mm, that man was spiritual. He was deep. Hmm? And chapter 29, he said, as it was in the days of my youth when the secrets of God was upon my tabernacle. So others were trading stock exchange manuals. Harvard University findings. But here was a man of Uz by name Job who was trading divine secrets and he beat all of them hands down. Spiritual depth. The secret of command in the affairs of life. So chapter 1 of Job and chapter 29 tells you that even business, business exploit answers to spiritual depth. So don't you think that spirituality has to do with ministry? It has to do with every aspect of human endeavors. Now, for instance, marriage is God's creation. I may not understand what I'm talking about. So, American legislation, Nigerian legislation, that can't affect it. It was God who instituted marriage. Therefore, shall a man leave his father and his mother and join himself to his wife. This is my initiation. Now, so, if you want to have a healthy command of the covenant blessings of marriage, you have to be deep spiritually on the subject of marriage. And to let you know it does not answer to civilization or education. Marriage in the American system is the worst in the world. One recent poll stated 
that um, uh, six out of every ten marriages in America last for one year. What a data. Because education does not have command of family life. Because education did not institute family or the family or marriage. Hmm. Intellectualism has its written in the spiritual. Because when Daniel, Shadam, Meshach, and Abednego were there and had their root in God, you understand it? They were ten times better than their colleagues. So the more spiritually sound you are, the more intellectually buoyant you become. And they refused to defy themselves with the king's rich food. And they were praying three times in a day. Man, they got them out. The power of spiritual depth. I like you to leave this place today and then just change your gear. You need to change your spiritual gear. You need to change your spiritual gear. Now listen to this. There was a young man, maybe of your age, younger than some of you. I mean, he was at the age of 16 when he started pursuing after God. In the days of Zechariah, who was his pastor, like I'm your pastor here now, who had understanding the visions of God, and as long as he sought the Lord, young Uzziah, God made him to prosper. Second Chronicles 26 and verse 5. Then verse 7 said, And God helped him against the Egyptians that rose up against him. Verse 14 said, He invented angels in the land to throw stones away from the walls. And his fame went all abroad. Technological revolution having its root in spirituality. Do like this to your head. Do like this to your head. Your head. You need to do like this to it. So you can wake up. Wake up. It was by the revelations of Zechariah that a revolution came in technology to that nation. So technological revolution has its root in the spiritual. Because everything about creation has its root in the spiritual. So spirituality is eternally a plus to destiny. Spirituality is eternally a plus to destiny. Spirituality is an eternal plus to destiny. It's an eternal plus to destiny. Abraham was not a preacher. He was a businessman. And he prospered generationally by following God unreservedly. And Abraham became the symbol of blessings in scriptures. And Abraham was old and stricken in age. Genesis 24 verse 1. And the Lord has blessed him in everything. In everything. This is very important. And get on a hot lane. For God. And see how that touches every aspect of your life. This little head of mine. Contains too many dangerous things. By being hooked on to God. I'm able to design for them political programs that could work and how to make it work without being a political science person any day in my life. There is something about God because it's at the root of everything. So when you are hooked on to God, you become everything that God is when it is demanded. Today they could not solve problems in their house of assembly, in their state council. They come to my house. Governor will come, deputy will come to come and explain themselves. I'm not from their state. I like you to place value on spirituality and don't think it is just a part of your life. It is your real life. Your entire life is spiritually defined.
When Muslim leaders come to me, political leaders, they lose their Islam when they come. They kneel down on their own. They say, please pray for us. Kneel down. I won't say kneel down. They just kneel down straight. You see, your level of command is a function of your spiritual depth. This depth is in degrees. And it is eternally uncoverable by any mortal man. So the Bible said, Oh, the depth, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his ways and his paths past finding out. Romans 11, 33. So it's an unsearchable depth. It's an unsearchable depth. So you keep searching and going deeper and deeper on and the deeper you go the greater command you gain can i hear your amen? amen the deeper you go the greater command you gain the deeper you go the greater command you gain in ezekiel 47 you must have read that scripture once and once a while or sometimes in the past it talks about a water flowing from the right side of the throne of him that is seated on the throne and he said, and an angel came and took me through the waters. And after measuring a thousand cubits, he took me through the waters. It was to the ankle. And he measured another thousand cubits. And the word says it was to the knees. And he measured another thousand cubits. And it was to the loins. And he measured another thousand cubits. And it was a water that could not be passed over. A thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand. There are many people who will never read the first thousand before they die. And the first thousand only takes you to the ankle deep. Hello? You are not in command. You are still a struggler. The second one thousand takes you to the knee deep. And by all standards, water is a symbol of spirituality in two ways. One, God's word is interpreted as water. Holy Spirit is also interpreted as water. Hello? Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this speaks of the Holy Ghost. Hello? And Isaiah 55, he said, O ye that is thirsty, come to me. He said, This, as the word of God comes down from heaven and waters the earth. So, God's word is likened to water. Holy Spirit is likened to water. So, water is a symbol of spirituality. Does that make sense? Isaiah 55, verse 1 to 10. John chapter 7 verse 37 to 39, the Holy Spirit. Now Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, that thou mightest cleanse her by the washing of water by the word of God. So God's word is water and God's word is the Holy Spirit. I mean, water is also interpreted as the Holy Spirit. So water is a symbol of spirituality. Say with me, water is a symbol of spirituality. Please say it as people are awake. Water is a symbol of spirituality. And then that scripture is a graph, it paints a graphic picture of degrees of spirituality. Ankle deep spirituality, knee deep spirituality, alloy deep spirituality, and then overflowing spirituality. Overflowing spirituality. This is very important. So your depth of spirituality is what determines your height of command. That's what determines your height of command. Your depth of spirituality is what determines the height of your command. Job stood there immovable as Mount Zion. In spite of the challenges. He said, even though he slay me, I will yet praise him. He said, curse God, and I said, shut up. All the days of my life will I wait. Hmm. Eh? Until my change comes. I know my change is coming. I'm deeper than the challenge you are talking about. Did this change come or not? The power of spirituality. That's what puts in command. 
our family is absolutely stress free, concern free, complaint free, confusion free, malice free. Because of spiritual depth <laughs> uncovered long before marriage. You don't learn driving by driving. You learn driving by learning driving. You don't learn flying by flying. Just go to the cockpit because you are the owner of the plane. You will crash before you take off. Debt. Come and say with me, debt. Now before coming into ministry, I was privileged to explore 39 selected biographies. How many? Uh -huh. So I was already a matured minister before I began ministry. I had tapped into the stories, the real life stories of men, to see what it cost them to do what they were doing, what they had to put in to make it happen, and what challenges they faced on the way that they were going. It was easy. Spiritual depth is the key to command. So at the beginning I could tell them wherever preachers ever get to by preaching that's where I'm going. From then I could tell when church was less than 20 that people that you go to today to look for in America they will be begging to come here. I wasn't making mouth. I was giving command by reason of depth. That you are long in church is not a function of depth. Just like you can be long teaching the university, that does not guarantee you become a professor, does it? Many, many, many will never be tempted with professorial position or appointment all their life because they are asked, you have to produce too much if you cannot produce too much you can have it the papers you write, not just the papers the quality of the paper or the depth of the papers is what determines whether you get appointed your lifetime or not The highest you can get to by a regular promotion is senior lecturer. They can patch you after you have stayed for long so that you can allow the young ones to come up. But as for being a professor, the, the, it is not just the paper, the quality of the papers. So before you become a spiritual professor, you need depth. You need what? You need real depth that puts you in practical command. 1983. A cousin of mine was struck with insanity. And we went home for a family meeting. And so they said to me, your son is sick. I said, what about? They said he was struck with madness. I said, Satan? You mean you are not even afraid that somebody is by relation? You could hit him? So I got up. And after the meeting, I drove to the place. She was there, he was then on his, in his mother's compound. So I went to see our own son in their mother's house. Where the devil was feasting, having a feed day. They were pouring oil, pouring palm oil, pouring everything. And he was sick naked. And he knew nobody. Say with me, he knew nobody. He didn't know the mother again. He said, who is this person? He just mentioned one name on his mother that doesn't relate at all. He was completely off balance. Say with me, completely off balance. Now, as soon as I entered into that room, had not spoken one word. My boy stood up and prostrated to greet me. And he said, do you know him? He said, yes, that's my brother. Do you know his name? Then he mentioned my name. In his madness, I was in command. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? And I said, dress him up. Put him in my car. Let me see the devil that has the God to enter my car with me. They put the boy in my car. That was the end of the devil. As they put him in the back seat of my car, he slept off under 10 minutes. By the time we got back to the Lord where we were living, 
to get him out of the car, we had to wake him up. Madness, what? We woke him up and then we helped him to his room. And he slept like a baby. He has not slept for weeks. In insanity, you don't sleep, just roam. So he slept like a baby, woke up in the morning and came down to greet me. Even me knew this is the hand of God. And I said, look, let's carry this boy to the teaching hospital so that village people will not come and fill up my house. We go to the hospital. They ask him what is wrong with you. He said, do you mean what was wrong with me or what is wrong with me? That it was clean cut without any touch. Spiritual depth. There are certain things I enter your house when you have enough command that can enter your house, that can't move near where you live. So they bless God. He went to the university after that episode. He's a graduate today. He's married today. Has children today. Serving God today. Amen. The devil would have had a means meet of his destiny free of charge if there was no one around that had the command to check him out. Spiritual debt. It is not about attending chapel service and market register. That's not the thing. I mean spiritual debt that puts you practically in command. Spiritual debt that puts you practically in command. I'd like you to get out of this service today and violently determine to have a change of gear in your spiritual life. You need to hear this story. There were quite a number from my mother's womb. And the devil was killing everybody one by one free of charge. We were all boys. So Satan was mad. He was going to kill everybody. And then, at least I saw three of my brothers died. So death became like a normal episode in the system. But after I met the Lord, I was very voracious in, the, in reading the New Testament and the Acts of the Apostles, which the missionaries gave us. And I got so enticed to the power of Christ in dealing with situations. So here was I. We got home on break. And the last born was struck by smallpox. So by smallpox and gave up the ghost in the early hour of the day. And the small boy told the mother, if you cry, it will be gone. No, you must not cry. Put him on your back. And then we moved on to the new property that our father was, my father was building. A new site. Not far from the house. And I backed my mother up with the legs of the boy coming down because he was a little grown. Are you following what I'm saying? Just so that people won't wonder, how are you carrying somebody with his leg down? So I, I stood at the back of my mother. That's why you must get your bearings right and be a value to your family. So we go to the new site, and I said, lay the boy down here on a plank, a two by six plank. Lay the boy down, and I said, God, if you are truly the one that did all that's recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, show yourself now, in the name of Jesus. And I said some funny, funny things, I can't remember all of them. The boy that lay lifeless mm, mm, is alive today. Spiritual depth is not a function of age, it's a product of such. It's not a function of age, it's a product of such. I had no calling to ministry, but I had the privilege, understanding of seeking God put to in command. We are going to have our second son. And the doctor said that the child was coming bleached or something. And so, after I closed in the service, I went to the clinic. I, I told them, I said, hold on, I'm coming. And I looked at my wife, and I put my hand on the belly, and I said, child, I command you, turn. I said, doctor, forget about any operation. And I turned back and went home. 
immediately labor ceased. My wife said, labor ceased immediately. And the child had to obey the command of his root. Every creation has its root in the spiritual. And so must obey spiritual command. Can I hear your amen? The child turned according to the command and delivery was through the normal process. Friends, wake up. There is power in spiritual depth. There is power in spiritual depth. The prayers you pray today don't end here. They are stored up in vials before the Lord. Hmm. According to Revelation chapter 5. They are stored up in vials before the Lord. And they answer to your authority in the future. So the time you spend on the street. You, you are loading your spiritual destiny with substance and virtue. Come on. Give the Lord a big hand for that. I went from wilderness to wilderness. I went from bush to bush. One day I was going to pray. And some insects were all over here. And as I was doing like this, they were multiplying. I said, no, 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 I'm losing my command. I said, insects, clear off now. Said, so they hear. They may not hear your language, but they can't refuse spiritual command. For that is their root. I was praying in the bush one night. And some animals, maybe monkeys and whatever, were jumping up and down from the trees. No light. I said, peace be still. Shh. I carry on with my prayer. Driving one night, 1984. Here we were face to face with a narrow bridge. That had no guards on the sides. And there was another vehicle that has entered the bridge from the other side. And we had an option to dive into the river or go head on collision and be destroyed. It was a bidu car. Right there in the split of a second, I said, No, this car is not created to swim, it's not a boat. But I will give my angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They will bear you up, not crash you in. Lest you dash thy feet against the stones. And how we passed on that bridge, I've told you that story before. Only heaven will reveal the myth and the mysteries behind it. No crashing, no brushing, and the two, the Lord, the two vehicles can never pass on that narrow bridge. Never. By the time we cross to the other side, the three other men in the vehicle, when they breathed downward, the car itself felt it. <sighs> they said, sir, did you see the bridge? I said, I didn't see it. Just go on. If I, if I were like you, I would have all died in the, in the river. Spiritual depth is what gives you practical command. Can I hear your amen? amen. The wildest man in the world, because the world is now running crazily after wealth. You hardly can trust anyone with money in this country today, including the church. Pastors are stealing, bishops are robbing, funders are squandering money, money laundering, all kinds of financial disease in the body. But like I said to you, Finance answers to spiritual command. Because finance has a spiritual root. So when you are deep enough in the knowledge of financial supplies, you are naturally in command of it. I can't privilege to be in command of that today. In the most relaxed manner, tension-free manner, 
Not tension free yesterday, tension free from the day I got it. There's a gap to get into in a particular subject that you are just practically in command. One day I tested my blood sugar and it was not the way I think it should be. So I took a shot of the anointing oil and I said I command that yoke of blood sugar excess to die now. I took it in and when I took it the following day it has regularized. Under 24 hours. You see, this, these things answer to spiritual depth. It is not the short of the oil, but the depth of the inside that accompanies the application of the oil that determines its level of authority. You heard some of us who are in the other church this morning had one of my daughters was caught by ritual killers last Wednesday or something in the morning. And he had anointed herself in the morning before going out because they were commanded to do that. And then anointed the children. And then got into a bus with seven ritual killers. And they took her in Sango here and got to Mera and tried to solve the Where are you going? They said, Where are you? Said, I'm a daughter of Zion. And they said, Who? What do you mean? He said, I'm Oyedeko's daughter. Ah! I don't know Oyedeko's daughter again. Please go, 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 go. They check her out of the bus. And destiny preserved. You see, you need depth to go places. The world is a wicked world, and it's getting more, it gets increasingly more wicked by the day. And may I say this? If you don't get it now, your bearings right now, you may regret it for life. Ah. So I want your spiritual taste to be enhanced. Don't make it a show. Let it be real. Let it be real. I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm talking about spirituality. Which is, which is defined by scripturality. Your depth of scriptural practice is what defines your spirituality. That is, and discovery is the beginning of it. You find it and then you apply yourself to it and things begin to work. The wealthiest man on earth in Bible history, Solomon the king, it was a spiritual path that led him to the realms of unlimited financial fortune. He went, he loved the Lord. And he went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. And a thousand burnt offerings did he sacrifice upon the mountain. <laughs> and the Lord met him, came down the same night and said, what should I do for you? And he said, Lord, I just love you. I just want to please you all my life. He said, ah. I've given you the wisdom you require to please me. And what you have not asked for, I have also added to you. Both riches and honor, so that in your days, no king of the earth will compare with you. And you all saw it anyway. So that was the highway to his unlimited financial fortune. Spirituality. Say with me, spirituality. There is no natural way under heaven that I will have contacted the level of financial fortune that my family is swimming in today. There is no natural way. Say with me, no natural way. There is no natural way. It has to be by the finger of God. And I'd like you to open up for that finger. Show me every genuine lover of God. That's another candidate for financial fortune in the making. Every genuine lover of God who demonstrates his love by willful, excited, and cheerful giving, both to promoting the kingdom of God and the welfare of mankind. That's another candidate for financial fortune in the making.
you shall not miss it. I'd like you to please understand that it is not just about your security. Spirituality is not limited to your security, but rather it enhances your command in the various aspects of your life. Look at this. He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He has anointed me. And He said, That anointing will result in the following. And they shall build the old ways. So every genuine anointing influences the environment. Isaiah 61 and verse 1 to 5. It influences the community, it transforms nations. So anointing is not for vibrating the church. Jiggy, jiggy in the church. That's not it. Anointing is for practical influence of communities and nations and the world. They shall build the old ways. They shall raise the former de de desolations. They shall repair the wasted cities. The desolations of many generations. And men shall call them ministers of God. So ministers of God don't have their ministry limited into the church building. That's why we are taking the lead today in providing a new perspective to university education. Which is acknowledged both by the president and all his aides. We are showing them how to do it. Yeah, they have been there doing it for years. But they don't know how to do it anymore. We are showing them the new way for doing it. Our new package for the new campus dazzled every one of them. There's a new innovation altogether. We are in the ultimate promoting the welfare of 100,000 peasant farmers, turning the food production level in the country, and getting involved in massive exports of produce. Just by light from heaven, you can't fulfill destiny without an adequate spiritual depth. So wake up. And seek God like never before. And make sure that you are not just graduating from Covenant University with a certificate. But a certified man and woman of God. Graduating as a certified man and woman of God. Who is in command. There are a few of us when they find us on the plane. The people in the plane are at peace. Yeah, what? Uh, is that man there? Let's go. Let's go. If that man is there, if that woman is there, let's go. Because of command. Because of what? Because of command. Spiritual command. You see, what of those who are, uh, you know, affected by... No, I'm not talking about that. What of Christians who are sick? Is sickness part of the package? No. It's not part of the package. I may not be able to explain what has happened to one man and one woman and one family and one son and one daughter, but I can see what the scripture says. And all we do is to cast our vote for what the world says, not what is happening around us. What is written is superior to what may be happening. Because there are too many factors determining what happens. What if God told you, don't go and you went? You can't have his backing as you go. You can't have his command. You don't have his command, so you can't be in command. I got to a place in Kano, uh, to the airport, to fly to, the, to America because I had a meeting there two days more. And they had checked in my luggage. And I said, Father, I'm going because I need to, I normally press some buttons when I'm going anywhere. No sand. No voice. I said, bring my bag, I'm not going again. They said, we have checked it. I said, ah, I'm the owner of the bag. I can't go because... If you don't bring my bag, I'll give it to you. They had to go into the plane to go and bring the bag out. And I went with my contingents in Kano to go check into the hotels. And then the hotel said, Father, I thank you. Without your command of go, I'm returning back home. Then the morning of the following day, said, now you can go. Now what? You are, no matter your level of command, you are not in command of God. No matter the level of your command, you will never be in command of God. So there are amazing factors that determine various happenings. So we must not allow the happenings, we must not use the happenings to, to, to interpret scriptures or we get wrong. When God 
told Paul not to go to Jerusalem, you know he went. And when Paul would not hear, God sent Agabus, a prophet, to him. I said, so shall it happen to this man when he leaves? He said, I'm not only ready to die. I'm not ready to so I'm ready to die. Ah. God said, you are saying that to me, you will suffer pepper. A God that they messed Paul up. One journey messed up Paul beyond measure. He came on that house arrest from that journey. He lived his house, he lives his remaining life in prison and under house arrest. Maybe it was designed by God because that's where he wrote all these letters. He didn't have to do that. So no matter your level of command, you are not in command of God. That's not what is happening to you. I want you to interpret scriptures because I don't know what aspect of his own commands you have refuted. We are flying one day in our own plane. And we have left Port Harcourt. We are on our way to Central Africa. And then we got to a point. I said, Pilot? He said, Sir, I said, turn back. Ah. He said, What's happening? I said, That's what is happening. You turn back. I'm going back to Lagos now. He said, What will have happened? I don't wait to hear. I won't like to wait to see in case I, may, I will not live to see. So I don't wait to see what may have happened. I wait to obey what he has commanded. Can I hear your amen? I'm talking about spirituality in its depth. We are happily married today, but that was not the first person I thought I would marry. My wife was not the first person I thought I would marry. I already spoke to someone I was going to marry her. And as soon as I finished speaking, and I got back to my room, God said to me, boy, you are wrong. And I said, Lord, what is it? Boy, you are wrong. Come on, say spirituality. I said, God, I beg you. Help me tell her to say no. Say with me spirituality. Now you're all young people. She was not a believer one year after. That is, she's completely far from the kingdom of God today. Can you imagine if I'd gone head on collision and I've lost this ministry? To a wrong marriage. There is no substitute for high level spirituality in the pursuit of life. Why? You only know the factors for now. No one has an idea of tomorrow. So it's better you who come to the God who knows tomorrow clearer than today. Then you can secure your destiny. I will have lived with regret in my life. I will have lost this ministry forever. Maybe I will have been a very disturbing member of a church. Where the deacons and the pastors are meeting on day and night. To settle score between husband and wife. But there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Someone among you may just be caught up when you are graduating. Oh, there's a place for you in Canada. And no cross-checking of anything. And the whole destiny is just dashed on the floor. Because there is no spiritual depth to appraise the issues on ground. 1987, I had people from about 13 nations in America, they gathered in my room and said, hey, sir, we need this church in America. We need you. This nation needs your kind of message. I smiled. And they forced me to say I will send someone to them. I smiled. I came back home. I knew by my knowing from my depth that I have no business being in America, but America will come to learn from what we are doing. Is it not happening today? May this year, Copeland will be sleeping here on your campus. Amen. And that by choice and with excitement. He said, look, Dave, I would like to be with you. I will stay here. I don't want to stay in the hotel. Say with me, spiritual adept. Uh, so wake up. You don't just go about and say, I want to marry you. And then you marry nonsense. I want to go to America. You, just go. you arrive there. Second day, you start cleaning gutter. Covenant, chai. 
raised from a covenant womb, there is that cleaning toilet. And then I come to the nation. Maybe you are walking that hotel as a cleaner. You see me, you don't. <laughs> Say, God forbid, come on. And sit up and change your spiritual gear both for your security and for your most needed command in the most wicked world churches were never known to have a footing in utter utter was the domain of wickedness the heaven of witchcraft churches here crawl and crawl and then crumble Factories here, big, big factories, shut down. One which we just go there, and everything will scatter. We came down here because of the level of command by reason of spiritual death. Every witch said, Hey, he has come! Ah, he has come! Ah. I said, If you fly over here, I clip your wings. I ended it. We had a public lecture here one day, and I got to my house and watched what I saw. At my carport, here was a bird, a live bird, standing. My driver parked, it was still standing. My driver opened the door, it was still standing. I came out of the car, it was still standing. I said, Solomon, what's that? He said, that's a bird. I said, pick it. He couldn't move. And Solomon picked the bird. I said, tie it up and burn it off. Say with me, spiritual command. Some robbers came to the gate of Canaan land, I think some two, three years ago, and then took about three vehicles. How many remember the story? And I stood on the platform and I said, in 24 hours, I decree the death of every one person involved and the recovery of all the vehicles. Now, under seven hours, all the vehicles were bad. In 24 hours, they were all dead. Say with me, spiritual command. Wake up and change your spiritual gear. And know that any carelessness now, you pay for it dearly in future. The power of spiritual command. Left to those who hate me, I won't make any mark in my life. But unfortunately, for the level of my command, they are frustrated. Because if I look at an evil man and I want to deal with him, it's one second. Drawing from my depth, my little depth, I'm still searching. So before they wake up in the morning, I've gone a little deeper. So in case there's a day on, I need to, to say it twice. Today, I won't say it once. I told you a story of when my wife and I were involved in an accident. Uh, General uh, Natania, Yemi Natania was there. And my wife said, In Jesus' name, I said, Once is enough. I said, Jesus' name, Jesus' name, too many times for one accident. Once is enough. When I've said it, just keep quiet. You don't need to say anything. And I said, In Jesus' name, just once. You can't say Jesus' name twice for a small accident. What will you now say when the plane is dropping? Amen. Say with me, command. And I said, you heard me. I said, you are not going to hit that concrete. That is, in my seated state, it's not, hey, God, in the name of Jesus. Once. Can't be saying Jesus' name twice to a car. And then, just to hit the concrete, it stopped. You were there. We were on a crusade and then robbers invaded the motel. And I got up because if you have the command, whether you are asleep or awake, it doesn't matter. Whether a lion is asleep or awake, does it make a difference? Do you play around him? Can you ever find a goat dancing that Titan God is sleeping? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. 
whether a lion is sleeping or awake is a lion and is able to eat whether coming out of sleep or dozing he can eat anytime so I heard some noise in the sitting room of my motel suit. So I was in my pajamas and I came out. And I saw five solid men holding weapons in their hands. And guess what? I was with my hands on my waist. Eh? That, your hand, that is, you are not planning in order to dream and then you organize how you are going to behave. That is the level of what? Command. And I looked at the five of them. Say in the name of Jesus. Ah, ah, I didn't touch anybody. Hey, hey, he has a gun. Ah, woo, woo. That is, you see his two hands on his waist. But you can't resist his command. Spiritual depth is the key. Do you ever think in your life that an arm robber can meet me and say, lie down? Do you think so? Or, or lift your hand? Okay, which mouth will you use to say it? And now imagine it first. I said, I didn't touch you. You are five of you holding weapons. My hands was on my, my, my waist. I only use my weapon from the depth where I want praying from. In the name of Jesus. I didn't even say amen. <laughs> if I said amen, we just slap them. Bow. And they fled at the sound of the voice. Now listen. If you knock on a door, you will be able to determine whether it's a child answering you from inside or an adult. True or false? Whether it's a man or a woman, true or false? I say, hello, who is, who is that? You know that that's a child. Hey, excuse me, who is that? You know that's a woman. I say, who is that? <laughs> You know, that is a gripper inside the house. <laughs> it's a full grown man, red, battle ready to finish you. I said, Who is that? So, it is not so much of what you say, but the depth from what you are saying it that determines your level of command. This is very important. I went for an interview years ago and in the interview they now said to me this is what you applied for but won't you prefer this one because it's higher than it amen eh? you want to hear a good story in those days down in my NYC we got into a company I mean into a corporation now, there was a senior architect in that place. There was general manager and everybody. So the senior architect resigned. And so his office was vacant. And there are other officers there who are regular gentle staff. And they just said to me, please take that office. That's your office. So inside my office was the fridge that others may need. So I became their boss. So people didn't know that the boss had left. Anytime they come, they say, is the boss inside? They say, no, the boss is not here. <laughs> I was the boss, but they couldn't change the order. May I say this to you? Get spiritually rooted. Don't think we are belaboring your life by showing you the way to life. Take advantage of it and free yourself from future regrets. I know many of you are in relationships now that will wreck your life. I know that. If you don't check it on time, by the time you will check it, it will be too late. I know some of you are about taking some decisions now by virtue of opportunities. To go to Italy, to go to Rome, to go to Jamaica. And at the end of the day, you wish, why? And then you come back to be seeking jobs from your peers and your mates. And they say you are too old for the job, they can't give it to you. Because you miss a major step in your journey. That's why you must be spiritual. And in case you are hanging on your parents, you will regret. Because no man can add value to your life but you. 
All they can do is what they are doing now. Spending money, energy, and resources and prayers to send you here. How you live your life, you will give account for it by yourself. Destiny is a race of personal responsibility. No one can eat on your behalf. No one can go to the toilet on your behalf. Everything that keeps you on earth is a product of you accepting personal responsibility. This is why I will say to you, six continuous, ever-growing spiritual depth and you will continue to gain more and more command of the affairs of life. There are inventors among you. The inventions will be birthed by your connectivity to God. There are great academics among you. The quality and depth of your papers will be birthed by inspirations from God. There are great industrialists among you. Your spirituality will determine how much of it ever comes to see the light of day. There are major economic drivers here among you. But your covenant connectivity will determine how much of that you live to experience. You are here. Amazing things are going on also at the Faith Tabernacle. You should be so curious to know what's going on now. What's the series for this man? Can I have a set of these tapes? And school your life properly into depth. You can't have command and not know. I close with this testimony. 1979, after some massive readings of the ministry of Smith Wigglesworth and other faith materials around me, I got so I got an understanding that the devil is not my problem. And how many know that Nigerians need that revelation now? The devil is not your problem. It is only your depth of insight that determines your level of command. I saw how Wigglesworth treated Satan and his activities. And that turned me on and gave me a very sound insight into Ephesians 5. I mean, Ephesians 2, 5, and 6. That we have been raised up together with him and met us together with him in heavenly places. And Ephesians 1, 20 and 21 says, Far above all principalities and powers. I got to a meeting in 1979. And I told the young people here, they were younger than all of you that are sitting down here, they were in secondary school. After teaching them that morning, I said, how many of you are witches here? Stand up. And the host of these young fellows stood up. I said, sit down first. I'm not saying that they call you a witch. I'm saying that you know that you're a witch by yourself. Not that you slept in the night and you ate. If you're hungry before you go to bed, you may eat in the night. But you know that you are a practicing witch. Stand up. And then, they stood up again. I call one of them. Come on here. Can you tell us what to do with the devil? Now, that is already a demonstration of command. Can you be calling a witch like that? Come, come, come out here. They are not permitted to say what they are doing outside. Tell us what to do. He said, anytime we want to suck blood, we go on the highway. And any vehicle coming, we cause to some assault. And we suck the blood of the victims. Now, without hesitation, I've told you this story before. I asked her, what of when people like us are coming? May I think what is that? How old were you then? Three months. About to be born. Still in heaven waiting for dispatch. I said, what of when people like us are coming? You know how people like us were, 1979. You know my height. I was taller than this, it is you that brought my height this low. It's taller than this. So I said, well, when people like us are coming, say, well, we sense a higher power on the way, on the road, we clear off the highway. Come and say, come on. Come on. When we sense a higher power, there is a level you get to that ritual killers when you're about to enter the garden. They say, no, 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 please don't enter. Because of the aroma, the aura of heaven, come as you. He said, when we sense a higher power on the road or the way, we clear off the highway. There is a clearing off depending on your level of command. Please understand this and take responsibility. Jesus is Lord. The governor who signed the 
CFO for your campus here. 1998. We met in a function. 1998 December or thereabout. And then they had to introduce him to me. He greeted me. I said, how are you? And someone said, oh, maybe you don't know him. I said, I don't know him. He said, oh, I'm, I, I was the governor that signed the CFO when, when I was governor in Ogun. He said, oh, okay, you are. God bless you. You know CFO 530 acres of land? You don't know the governor? I never knew the office. I didn't ask for his name. I didn't need his name. This is a command. This is what? Please wake up. You are too much to go out of here and be suffering sickness and disease. Come and say too much. I can't want to find you in the hospital tied down to any sick bed. Too much. But you need adequate depth to command. To, to gain adequate command of sickness and disease. And spirituality in this context is scriptural practice. Scriptural practice begins with script, scriptural discoveries. So, so scriptural discovery plus practice equals your spiritual weight. Begins with discovery but does not end there. It goes on to the practice of it. Thank you, Jesus. Rise to your feet. You know something in five years' time, there will be a clear difference between those who understand this message and practice it and those who wonder how long will they disturb us with all these things. There will be very clear difference. But I pray that the difference will be positive for each one of you. My prayer is that no step of your life will be taken carelessly from henceforth. My prayer is that you will not be tied to the aprons of others to the detriment of your destiny. My prayer is that you will not mistake every open door for God's door for you. There are many of you who are given to serve in some areas that don't seem attractive at the onset. How can I go into academics? When I have banks, I have this, I have that to go into. But that's what you are caught out for. How can I go into industry when there is buying and selling? And manufacturing industry is where you belong. And then you start just moving anyhow to see how to make something quick out of life. But it's better to make something real than make something quick. Can I hear your amen? 1984, I said... I would consider it a demotion if I were invited to the president of Nigeria. 1984. Total income of our ministry in 1984 was 18,600 for the year. Say with me for the year. And I said, I would consider it a demotion if I were invited to be president of Nigeria. Who will invite me? I wasn't qualified to start an election for local government. Who will invite me? But today, can you try to be president in Nigeria and not try to talk to me? You'll be messing up. Because by one command, you will lose one. You will lose a million votes by one command. Every presidential candidate books appointment. Sir, can we see you? I need to see you, sir. One of them told me, he said. It is my pleasure and delight. I've tried to talk to you, to get at you on phone for long. I couldn't. But please, I want to see you. I need your advice. Because I knew where I was going. Most young people don't know where they're going. They only know where they are. I want to go to the bank. That is, that is someone who is to set a where you are going is more important than where you are. So don't allow where you are to confuse you as to what awaits you in future. And um, just be yourself and stay where you belong. I have not sat with any management, bank management team that came to our campus here once. Whether you are first bank or second bank or third bank, it doesn't matter. When you come, you go and see the officers. I don't talk to banks. Why? Because we don't borrow anyway. So what is he talking to the bank for? They are the one to talk to us and uh, you talk to my men. If they think I should hear what you are saying, they tell me. If they don't think so, that's all. There are inventors among you. Instead of craving after 10, 10 era, something that will last and outlive you is committed to you. But the 10, 10 kobo makes you to be running up and down. Imagine if I got confused and packed my luggage and left for the U.S. in 1987. Where will your campus be today? There 
there are many of you like that that many destinies are tied to you many what there are many engineers that are tied to your manufacturing industries many 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 destinies are tied to you there is a future of nigeria tied to your destiny so why must you confuse yourself and be running a theater scatter go to Cordova today run to kinshasa tomorrow go about buy granite sell pepper all in the name of money but my bible says whatsoever it doeth it shall prosper whether it's a carpenter it will flourish he doesn't have to run everywhere not on a theater scatter he has to just be where he belongs lord i receive grace to maintain a sense of spirituality to a new order of crave for spiritual things and i pray that tomorrow you will have a story to tell can i hear your amen that you will have a story to tell tomorrow that we 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 have a story to tell tomorrow all through your remaining days i don't want to miss any one week without a fast without what a fast it's part of your spiritual upbringing when i was growing up the 40 day length period i was addicted to it i was what 40 days I didn't have any call to minister I just had a love for God since this ministry started no week has ever passed maybe one or two I don't know when that could be that I was not in a fast Nineteen eighty-five. I told you before I was virtually in a fast all the year round Every truly spiritual people they pay some definite spiritual prices. Brother Kenneth Copeland waits on the Lord 30 days, the first 30 days of every year. How many days? Stamina, spiritual stability, spiritual depth, spiritual command. That's how it happens. Can you imagine a Covenant University student graduating without understanding the meaning of fasting? Hello? It's a cafeteria five times a day. Guguru here, Epa here. Green drink, blue drink, all kinds. All week run, all month run, all semester run. If you live here as a spiritual baby, baby baby you pay the price for and here even when it's a child it's different not from a servant it's subject to others direction and command it's no command i pray that this will sink to the depth of your being and give you a new approach to life altogether praise god Amen.